Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it is Layer Cake turn 15. Uh, another message from Raga, once again trying to persuade people to jump on Ulm, Bogorus, or Patala, which is fair enough. If I was in his situation, I would absolutely be trying to do this as well. However, I would probably be trying to do it on Discord rather than through the in-game messages. Um, in my opinion, the in-game messages in Dominions are not really useful to anything, for anything. Um, you basically use them to troll and you use them to make people laugh and that's about all they're really good for if you want to actually do diplomacy you have to do it out of game as sad as it is to say so we've hit construction level two we're going back to alteration we've summoned 10 kanoha tengu and 10 fire ants we have searched three provinces for magic sites and not found any oh well it happens uh, we got two bad events, uh, one misfortune and one that drops my sloth and lowers my province resources, which is actually a really bad event if it hits a fort. Fortunately, it was just this province and I don't care about production here, but even so, not great. I completed my palisades in Kamiya and I completed my rock walls in the Sea of Rond, so I can now recruit shark warriors here which I'm going to do. So we've got that underway. We've got a crab general down here. Um, we're going to swap back to recruiting master Shigenjas instead of regular Shigenjas, since I now have the funds for it. That leaves me 461 gold. That's a little, that's not quite enough gold, especially because over here I also want to be pumping out crossbows and ninjas. So, gonna have to work out how much gold I can, uh, I, I need to save some gold somewhere. So right now I'm at 341 treasury, I'm building that fortress. I would like to upgrade this fortress. I've got a lab here, so I'm gonna start recruiting Master Shugenjas. Not starting any other forts just yet. Kinhide, move up there. Masatsura could build a temple, which would be 400. But instead, I think I'm just gonna have him start calling God. Uh, over here we're gonna call God and call God so we'll be generating four God points this turn you can research you can research I only have five air gems so I can only summon one round of Tengu this turn now so Kanoha Tengu not as good as the other Tengu whose name I've forgotten right now but you get more of them so that's fine they're all going to go with Ryutaro, along with those fire ants, which are mindless. They're stealthy, which is kind of a nice thing to have, but mainly they're just sort of beefy chaff. And these few samurai archers will also go with Ryutaro, and he will join the army amassing for the invasion of Mictlan. Up here, Yoshimitsu is going to try to assassinate an enemy commander. Um, Let's set up our army real quick. I only have one actual army commander, so... Uh, these two guys I'm actually going to leave behind because they'll kind of mess me up. Yeah, the Karasu Tengu. I've got Karasu and Konoha. They're all going to join Makoto's army. Uh, the Yamabushi, yeah, I'm going to leave behind because I want my line up there. You guys are going to hold and attack rear. You are going to hold and fire archers. You'll be back that way. You guys are going to Stone Skin and Earth Meld, which is what you're for. And we're going to dispense these gems a little more evenly. So Mashiro, get two from him and get two from him. So everybody has four earth gems and everybody should be on conservative gem usage so they don't spend them until I want them to. Uh, and we'll bring the Yamabushi. We might as well. We'll bring them with him. They'll have a morale penalty and they'll probably route almost immediately, but that's okay. We're just sort of bringing them to well to die, really. We're, we'll have them right up in the front to soak up arrows. So, this army is going to invade Mictlan. I'm actually considering going over this way first, but, uh, ooh, they got the King of Legends. Interesting. Okay, so this is a national Mictlanese hero. Wait a second, the King of Legends. They have Misfortune 
three. No, he took luck one. That's right. He was planning to take a luck bless. Okay, so yeah, that's the national hero, the king of legends. So that's fine. Just fine. Yukimasa, you can also research. So Ryutaro's going to move out with the, those troops. Yeah, we're going to recruit shark warriors there and probably also here, I'm thinking. I don't need another crab general now that I have one, at least not yet. Oh, that's right, I can get two without um, without throwing my plans out of whack. Down here, we're going to spam out samurai archers. And up here, it's going to be Akaoni samurai. Mm, we're actually gold limited. What if we made that go Hatamoto? Could we get one more out? Here we can think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, probably didn't make a difference. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, it does make a difference. I can get seven versus eight, or I can get ten samurai archers and an Ashigaru. So, okay, we're going to stick with the samurai archers for now. Uh, suffering real serious gem shortages right now. I could really, really, uh, I, could, I could definitely use some gems. That's right, that was Masashi searching. Hitakazu was searching this province. Um, I've actually got pretty reasonable research right now. Hitakazu, why don't you move up there to search that province and work your way across? Um, yeah, we're going to keep sending people out to search for sites. Like right now, actually... Ooh, Masayasu randomed five paths. Okay, Yukimasa, Kanohas, Kanohas, Masayasu, move. I would like you and your sight searching prowess to make sure I haven't missed anything down here. Tokimichi can patrol for now. <laughs> I am tempted by the sheer hilarity of empowering a crab general in magic, but we're not going to, uh, we're not going to engage in that sort of behavior just yet. Next turn, the fortress will be upgraded. It will take two turns after that point to recruit a Ryujin. If I started recruiting a Ryujin now, it would still take a net of three turns, which is why I'm not bothering. I'm getting a second crab general instead. Up here, of course, we're getting our shark warriors. Uh, and without the crab general, we would be very close to being able to recruit, uh, four per turn. It's actually recruitment points that are letting us down here, because they do take 31 recruitment points each. So, I should be able to maintain this level of recruitment pretty much indefinitely, so long as I have the cash. And of course, up here, we're pumping out the crossbows, and getting some samurai and such to move around. Pagobar, you can just patrol here, just sort of, yeah, just take your uh, your 24 crossbows and, uh, and patrol. We'll give you the standard orders. Uh, Patala is going in hard against Raga, which is great. It looks like Raga is definitely being cut down to size. That's fine. I would like this battle. What is a Doster? Oh, a do it's the mage. Okay. I would like this war to continue as long as possible, and it looks like I'm not even going to have to get involved, which is fantastic. Uh, with Raga controlled, if not destroyed... The risk will be, oh, and ninjas are so stealthy you can actually put them on enemy capitals and expect them to stay there for a while because defense 25 only has patrol strength 11. So against stealth 70, their odds of finding a ninja are extremely low, unless someone is actively patrolling. Um, yeah, Vur Mifadreth. No, no, do not do that. Do not. Do not. I'd like to upgrade this fort. But upgrading the fort would mean that I have to find money from somewhere. I'll start upgrading that fort next turn. That'll be fine. It won't be any it won't be a problem to not have that fort upgraded yet. So, yeah, the army's gonna go in. Uh Ryutaro will move up with his army, and he is probably gonna go into this province while the army attacks the werewolves next turn. So we should take three provinces in two turns. Then I will probably build a fort in the impassable mountains, to be honest. That, I think, is very, very likely what I will do next. 
Um, this army as well will be here, and we will combine those troops under Ryotaro's command. And so he'll have actually a fairly respectable force. Um, he'll have about almost 30 samurai archers, 15 infantry, 10 fire ants, and the Kanoha Tengu. And he does have four squad leadership, so he will be able to lead all of those squadrons. Which is great. So, that will be the plan. Actually, I'm just gonna... Let's just uh, throw that guy in squad four for now. So, everything is turning up Joman right now. Things are going pretty well. Agartha has contacted me, letting me know that man appears to be massing an army down here where I don't have any scouts. That's a little concerning. Um, I can recruit scouts in this province, so actually... I am going to start doing that because I need vision. My current vision is unacceptably limited. And priests there. Shugenja's there. Shugenja's there. Shugenja's there. Three mage recruitment spots, which is a pretty good place to be right now. I want to get a temple up here. And of course, I'll need to get a temple up here as well. Um, that is actually a reason I'd like to get Ryutaro down under the sea, but there's another way to do it, which is to give Masatsura a ring of water breathing, and then he can go down here and build the lab and the temple. So, in order to do that, I would need Masayasu to wait a turn, or Hidekazu to wait a turn, and I'd also need to alchemize a bunch of gems, which I'm hesitant to do because my gem income has been so low so far. So I think maybe Ryutaro... Uh. Okay, how about this? Send this army that way. We're assassinating... No, I've got to hit this province now. I've got to do it. Okay. Yeah, we'll hit this province. I mean, I could potentially take that province with my mages by summoning Earth Elementals. That would be probably eminently possible. But risky, and I don't feel like playing risky business right now. Just because I... Ugh. If I fail, losing three mages as Joman would even would just put me even farther behind. And I'm not looking to be even further behind than I currently am. So what's actually going to happen is we're going to move up here. Ryutaro is actually probably going to split his troops between these two commanders. Um, yeah, none of them are magic beings, so regular old commanders can lead them. And then, then he will go underwater in order to do the construction that he needs to do in the Sea of Rond. Uh, we'll have to cut back on recruitment for a turn or so to save some money in order to build that infrastructure, but our income should be going up as we take provinces from Mictlan, so everything should be fine. So. That is turn 15. I'll see you in turn 16 when the war with Mictlan actually kicks off for real. Take care till then. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is Layer Cake turn 16, the first turn of the war. Uh, we got a messenger from Patala. Patala is basically telling me that he intends to go attack Bogarus after fighting Raga, which is fine by me. Sorry, that was my phone going off. I will send him a message telling him that it's fine by me, which I haven't sent yet, but I will. Uh, the Throne of Life has been claimed in the name of Lavuari. So this is Arcosophale. So that must be this throne. Okay, so Arcosophale is getting reasonably large. They've got a fort built there. Got some Ajima companions and Cerulean warriors in this province. We're going to keep pushing out our scouts just to make sure we know what they have. We're also recruiting scouts over here that we are pushing out to make sure we know what man has, and of course, still recruiting scouts in Gwerth. We're also recruiting ninjas in Kamiya. So Chuimon here will be moving down this way to push into Agartha and see what's going on in that direction. Agartha has just taken this throne with a huge freaking army. This is a big army for this point of the game. In fact, I think this might be pretty much every unit Agartha has recruited. I mean, about 200 units on turn 16 is more than 10 units per turn. 
and he doesn't have any mercenaries because Patala has hired all the mercenaries. So that has to be most of his recruitment, if not all of it. Which is a little worrisome. It's a little... It, it, it frightens me a little bit to see that all pointed in my direction, but we'll see. Maybe he's not attacking me. Who knows? Maybe he's going to turn around and go fight someone else. It's possible. Uh, in any case, I am committed over in this direction, so we're going to continue on that way. I am recruiting Shark Warriors in the Sea of Rond, and I'm recruiting Ryujin in the Sea of Wo. So my first Ryujin is under construction, will be done in two turns. Excellent. Messages for... going back to messages. We summoned some Tengus, Marignon has anointed a new prophet, and uh, we tried to assassinate a Sun Priest here. So my assassination did fire. And it actually worked pretty well, as you'll see, but uh, he cast Holy Avenger, and Holy Avenger is a spell that does damage to people randomly on the battlefield after you are killed. So you can make sure Mechlin's Bless is still just HP plus two. So this Sun Priest is casting Holy Spells. He gets hit by a Shuriken and routes with one hit point remaining. And as soon as he routes off the field, watch, what, wait for it, wait for it, boom. Holy Avenger nukes the ninja. So, sorry Yoshimitsu, you did your best. And you did remove an enemy mage, which was good before the battle. Then we attacked in the same province. So we've got our little gang of Tengu in the back, we've got a big old line of Akaoni samurai up front, we've got a few archers and three mages. All of whom have earth gems but are not using them. On the other side, We've got some enemy units and also just a bunch of province defense. He invested pretty heavily in province defense on this province, presumably in an effort to prevent me from doing this. So the Tengu get their lightning in, they score several kills with their lightning, and then they're going to fly to the back. The infantry meet, and with Earthmeld support especially, my infantry are just tearing his infantry to shreds. Mine are so superior. In the back here, my Tengu are taking heavy casualties, but also inflicting heavy casualties. They've routed the archers off the field entirely with their charge, which is exactly what I wanted them to accomplish. However, they are now flying around a little bit. Uh, these warriors are also routed. Unfortunately, they're routing into the Tengus and so inflicting more damage, and my Tengu then route off the field as the victorious infantry charge across to try to finish off the survivors. So in terms of casualties, that was a really good battle for me. Um, my Akaoni Samurai, of course, just murdered the enemy infantry. Absolutely gutted it. Um, their Jaguar Warriors were killed, inflicting only a couple of casualties as they transformed. Their Militia infected only one and died. The Province Defense did get a few kills off, mainly on my Tengu. I lost 6 out of 11 Tengu. They did score 30 kills between them, so they killed about 3 people each, which is definitely workable. However, this is the problem with Tengu. They just take so many casualties because their protection is so low. They can't take damage. Uh, missiles in particular murder them. So, um, they did retreat, the remainder of them, and two more died when retreating. So my actual casualties there were 8 for 30, which is, eh, eh maybe not the greatest. In Batane, interestingly, we got to see these Ajima Companions and Cerulean Warriors, the Ape Warriors of Late Age Arquisophale, go into combat. Um, the Cerulean Warriors are pretty, pretty decent, and the Ajima Companions are very, very effective heavy cavalry. Uh, so that was in... where was that? That was right here. Okay, so they just wiped out those Barbarians. Fine by me. Uh, I'm out of money again. I'm recruiting... Not much, to be honest. I'm no, recruiting no infantry at the moment. I've got my shark warriors going. I was saving up. I needed to save the money so that I could start to build this fortress. And I swapped from recruiting master shugenjas to regular shugenjas. I don't have quite enough money to swap back. So instead, I'll take that cash and I'll recruit a few samurai archers and one ashigaru just to have some kind of recruitment. Ryutaro is moving into the Sea of Rond. Uh, where we are going to be working on upgrading this fortress and building a lab and a temple. So we do have more infrastructure spending still coming, unfortunately. It's going to take up a lot of our income. This army, uh, with the fire ants, infantry, and archers, and we'll take these guys along with us too, as chaff, 
uh, these guys are all moving into the impassable mountains, which is which are not well defended. So that's great. Mictlan itself appears to be where the enemy is congregating. They do have Mictlipokli, the king of legends, who, as I said, I believe is a national hero. This army can push forward into those werewolves. I'm pretty sure I can take those werewolves on. I need a little bit of money to kick up the province defense to prevent myself from being scout sniped here. So we're going to kick it up to six. We'll take that guy back. And otherwise, things are going pretty well, unless Agartha rolls in on me with this army. If Agartha rolls this army in, um, I am going to have a bad day, because this army is big enough that I don't know I can stop it. I have Conjuration, so probably, to be honest, my best bet would be to gather up my Air 1 mages and give them every air gem I can scrape together, potentially alchemizing gems, if that's what it takes. And just drop as many lesser air elementals as possible on top of this, this army. Unfortunately, I don't have many. Uh, this fortress is recruiting crossbows, which is useful. But crossbows alone will not... I mean, 34, 40-something crossbows cannot hold off 200 enemy units a large proportion of which are Agarthan light crossbowmen, and all the rest of which have shields as well as heavy armor. Uh, my crossbows will be relatively effective against that, but not effective enough. So we'll kind of have to see. Masayusa is going to be set to retreat, so if Agartha does attack me, he'll just run right off the field as fast as his little old man legs can carry him. And we'll see how it goes. I should be getting my god back sometime within the next, I don't know, four or five turns. I'm up to five points per turn, and that will only be going up further. Uh, this is scary, because looking at it, I legitimately do not know if I can stop this army. Uh, at the very least, if that army wants to, it could trundle through my provinces and besiege my capital. Now, that army cannot go underwater, which means it can't take these two provinces, and I will always at least be able to recruit Shark Warriors and Reusion, which will help. Not gonna lie, that will definitely help. However, the fact that I'm committing all of these armed forces over to attack Mictlan is a little bit scary. I mean, it really is. Uh, I don't know that I'm gonna be able to win, at least in a timely fashion. And this army has, you know, 90 units or 80 units and this army is another 40. So this is like 120 units. It's, it's a significant force that I'm sending over towards Mechtlin. And uh, I don't, I just don't know if it's going to pay off. They only have 200 wall integrity. So these two armies should actually be able to siege them down pretty quick once I get there. Um, that said, I'm not sure I'll want to go in immediately because they do have primarily cap-only sacreds. And I don't think this army will be able to probably take them on head to head because these guys are basically worthless samurai archers are good my infantry are solid and my um tengu of course will be useful i i took the three tengu that retreated and put them into this squad but i i'm just not sure we're gonna have to play it by ear a little bit i'm gonna get in touch with agartha see if he can see if he'll hold off if i can get a non-aggression pact or something with him and we'll proceed to that point Patala has a really big stack of Light Bandar Archers and War Elephants over here. Now, Patala and War Elephants are not very good. Somehow, and I don't know how this is, but somehow Raga has a bunch of Pale Ones. And I'm almost certain that Raga cannot normally recruit Pale Ones. So, I don't know what's going on there. They have a very tough fort. They do have a Zayedin spa bed, as well as six Zayedins here, and I presume other Zayedins elsewhere, although I don't know where exactly, but despite how it looks, assuming he has at least one more squad of Zayedins somewhere, which he really, really should, I would anticipate this army losing if they attacked Raga, just because, you know, 12 to 15 Zayedins would probably tear those elephants apart. Patala's elephants are badly protected and have low morale, 
So I would anticipate that would be a much more even fight than it looks. I don't have the money to be upgrading both forts this turn. In fact, I really don't quite have the money to be upgrading this one, except I desperately need to upgrade it because I need the extra wall integrity in case Agartha decides to attack me. Um, I'm actually going to keep my ninja here. And the reason is I'm going to keep him here so that if this Agarthan army attacks, I can set him to assassinate and send him in to try and kill one of their commanders. In support of that, I am going to forge him some armor. And I'm considering forging him a Kithironic Lion Pelt. His Chainmail Curus has 12 protection, but doesn't provide any protection to the head. The Kithironic Lion Pelt would increase his protection, including giving him head protection. And it's cheap, and it would not lower his defense. Lowers his defense by minus one, has an encumbrance penalty of one. So yeah, it wouldn't hurt him beyond what the Chainmail Cuirass already does. The other option would be to forge him a uh, Black Steel Plate, which would give him more body protection, but also more encumbrance. Oh boy. Yeah, the Berserker Pelt wouldn't help at all. And I also want to give him a weapon, if at all possible. Uh, partially because a weapon will remove, especially a two-handed weapon, would remove his shuriken, and so make him just go into melee, which would be useful. Uh, to be honest, the gloves of the gladiator might be handy. They're too expensive, though, but giving him four attacks would make him quite effective in melee. Uh, too expensive. Uh, the just man's cross wouldn't actually be a terrible decision. Uh, the Lightning Rod would be a terrible decision. Thorn Staff... Gives him Defense 5. But only one attack. Uh, the Great Sword of Sharpness is kind of the classic murder one guy weapon. Um... Giving him a Scepter of Authority would be kind of hilarious, because it would mean he could just set his target on fire from range. That... Mm, I'm... To be honest, I'm tempted. Ignores enemy army, but is not always strong enough to kill the victim. Rain or snow, I don't have to worry about in assassinations. That's kind of a funny idea, actually. Because... Like, Agarthan units are human, they just depend on heavy armor, and combustion ignores armor. Hmm. So what if I forged a Kitharonic Lion Pelt, and a Scepter of Authority... This is probably a stupid idea. There's probably a really, really obvious reason why this won't work. But I'm going to do it. Um, without thinking about it too much, I'm just going to do it. And then, I'm also going to give him a handful of acorns. I can't afford the handful of acorns. Oh, dear. Because um, what I want is I want to give him something that will provide him with distractions. And the handful of acorns would be perfect. Okay, what if instead of the Ketharonic Lion Pelt, we just form, forge him a hat? What if we forge him a Dragon Helmet, which will also give him a morale boost? So Dragon Helmet, Scepter of Authority, and you have four paths. You only have two paths, but they're both Earth. Um, and a handful of acorns. So that'll give him three vine men, which will distract the enemy from fighting him and give the fire more time to work. Yeah, let's do that. So we'll give him a hat. That will increase his protection and make him more resilient against head hits. We'll give him a scepter of authority, which will let him set people on fire at range. And we'll give him the handful of acorns. That will spawn three vine men, which will attract enemy spells as opposed to him. That might actually be pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie, that would be a pretty... That could be neat. Could work. Could very, very well work. At least once. And once is really all I need. So, that's gonna be the plan. 
<laughs> that's gonna be the plan such as it is um we're still going up alteration we're gonna hit why am i on death we're gonna hit alteration level three in two turns which will give us iron skin numbness and uh immolation mist form and protection which is the ranged bark skin spell level four will give us swarm which is one of the real classic powerful nature spells as well as destruction and curse of stones level five is the big one level five will give us maws of the earth wooden warriors and mother oak if we can ever cast it uh, as well as incinerate which is combustion but way more powerful basically and requires fire three which nobody has but actually fun fact fire random ryujin and any master shugenjas who has random fire two can cast this spell by casting phoenix power and then incinerate which could be actually pretty useful so uh that's gonna be the turn thanks for watching i will see you in turn 17 where we find out if we're gonna have to try and deal with this giant agarthan army or not and we will continue the conquest of mechtlan take care okay layer cake turn 17 uh raga has sent me this message again now the throne of law has been claimed by agartha which puts them i think at yeah that's just their first one so that's this throne here uh, either their army has shrunk or they moved some of it away or possibly this is just a more accurate scout report 120 units a little more manageable uh there was a battle in oaklands where my forces took out these werewolves it was a pretty boring battle to be honest we pretty much just walked forward and killed them uh, werewolves are not scary to Aka Oni Samurai. Werewolves are basically like transformed jaguar warriors, were jaguars. They have three attacks, they regenerate, they're stealthy. Uh, they're beast masters, oddly enough, or at least that one is. Yeah, I think they're all, they all have the beast master trait. But they suffer from being protection six and otherwise not not defensively impressive so my archers did some damage as they came in and then my akaoni samurai pretty much just murdered them outright on contact so that was fairly simple uh in lorboro marignon has moved into attack mechtlan and just wiped out province defense however here's the interesting thing behind them patala's earth serpent moved into a province that they didn't have to move through because Marignon can sail, but this field right here has been taken by Patala's god, Re the Earth Serpent, who fought and killed my Earth Serpent several turns ago, way over on this end of Patala's territory. Marignon can't be happy about this, especially since they have a fort right here. So, Well, here's my plan. Impassable Mountains, similar, just wiping out province defense. Mechtlan has basically, I think, given up at this point. He hasn't gone AI, though, yet. Will soon, I bet. But what I'd like... What I'd like would be to be able to besiege Mechtlan and take it. I want Mechtlan itself. Both for the gem income and the regular income, and because it's a capital with a lot of resources and recruitment points. I don't want to give it up to Marignan. Now... I think my armies can take Marignan's army here. He does have crossbows. He has 38 crossbowmen. And he has 21 hands of justice and 15 royal guards. Both of which are quite tough. Uh, royal guards have very, very high protection. And hands of justice have a high damage halberd attack. If we look at his bless... If we look at his bless real quick... He's got magic weapons, magic resistance, HP, blood surge, and attack skill plus four, which makes his hands of justice pretty strong. Um, that said, right now they're attacking at 14 and doing 23 damage with their halberds with protection 14 and defense skill 11 after their bless. Um, let me double check, but... Yeah, my Akaoni Samurai are actually better in every way except raw damage. Higher defense skill, higher effective attack, slightly higher protection. Um, if Akaoni Samurai go up against Hands of Justice one-on-one, -on -one, 
I think the Aka Oni actually win. Now, the Royal Guard will put a bit of a kink in that because the Royal Guard do have 20 protection, which makes it very, very hard for Aka Oni Samurai to hurt them effectively. But I think it can be done, especially when it comes to having these Master Shugenjas behind casting spells to buff me. So I'm going to get in contact with Derokrithia, who is playing Marignan, uh, and figure out whether he wants to... I mean, basically, I contacted him and I was like, holy crap, Patala is like moving in on your territory, dude. Um, and I'm going to see if I can get him to turn around. Uh, because I'm not giving up Mictum without a fight, and I think I can win any given fight, because what I can do is I can shift my scripting here. If we look at the way my armies are, I can set these guys to hold an attack. Well, I want them to go in as quickly as possible, but basically, I just change my earth melds to lesser, er lesser earth elementals. And then I'll have earth elementals going in with my infantry. Um, my archers are also firing at his archers. His crossbowmen are not particularly well protected. So my samurai archers will be inflicting casualties. Um, what I'll probably do is... Yeah, I've got these guys right out front, so I'll pull my Akaoni very slightly back and make sure the fire ants and the jaguar tribe take the brunt of the crossbow fire. And they will die very easily, but it doesn't matter. I don't care about them. The fire ants will actually take several hits. Uh, the jaguar tribe will just get massacred, but they're just jaguar tribe. And that should allow my Akaoni to get into combat relatively unscathed. This poor Akaoni Samurai, he still has all his regular combat skills, but he has lost his katana because he has lost his arm, and so he's going into battle armed only with a single clenched fist. What a trooper. What a G. Um, you can see a number of my Akaoni are wounded. This guy has a limp. This guy's lost an arm, so he's down to his fist. This guy has a chest wound and has lost an arm. A lot of my, a lot of my uh, Akaoni have lost arms. That guy has battle fright, which makes him nearly as cool as the average guy. Yeah, that's three chopped off arms so far. Four. Yeah, of my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, of my eight wounded samurai, fully half have lost an arm. Uh, that's interesting. Let's see if the, uh, if the... If that ratio holds. Uh, yep, he's lost an arm. And he's weakened. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> half of my injuries are chopped off arms. What are the odds? In any case, I still think my infantry, my infantry can take his infantry. Um, I outnumber him. He has more better armor piercing support, but I actually have more archers, I believe. Uh, 27? No, we have about the same number of archers, but I also have the Konoha Tengu, who will be able to fly in and attack his crossbows, so I think I can take care of the crossbows with those, um, with my nine surviving Konoha Tengu, and that should basically clinch me the battle. I anticipate if I do that, all of my Konoha Tengu will die, but they will die doing what they're needed for. So, I'm moving my armies in here to Mechlin. Uh, I think my flying units should take care of the crossbows, and then my Master Shugenjas with Earth Meld should provide good enough support to my samurai. In, in previous battles when I've tested that, the Earth Melds, the first Earth Melds have gone off just before contact with the enemy lines, and so they allowed my Akaoni samurai to do immense damage in the very first round which is what I'm looking for. Uh, that's exactly how I want that to work. Uh, now, I will be somewhat hampered by the fact that all these chaff are in front of me, but that's okay. The chaff can go in front. And that should win me the battle. Now, I don't want to fight Marignan because beating Marignan might cost me enough casualties that I'll have a hard time dealing with this nonsense. They've got the King of Legends in there, who, I, if I recall correctly, is a Death Blood Mage. They've got Eagle Warriors, who, when blessed, can fly. They've got Jaguar Warriors, who, of course, are wear Jaguars. It's going to be... It's not going to be super, super easy to take this fort. Especially because I'm only going to have 46... 
I'm only gonna have I'm only gonna have less than 150 siege strength at first, so I'm gonna have to send more troops. Speaking of more troops, I have actually stopped recruiting shark warriors just because I needed the cash. With all the recruitment I've been doing, I just don't have the money to get the things that I want to get done done. So I'm up started upgrading this fortress. Um, I'm building a lab here and upgrading this fortress in Kamiya. That'll be done this turn. Um, I got a terrible random event this turn in Kamiya. Plus unrest, minus population, and then on top of that another 1600 people left. Reducing Kamiya down below 10,000 in population, and it means that I can only recruit 5 crossbows per turn until I upgrade my fort. I run out of resources. Um, which is super incredibly frustrating. Uh, once I upgrade that, I'll be getting a few more resources from Oak Halls. So, I may be able to recruit 6 or 7 crossbows a turn, but still, that's not many crossbows. Not as many crossbows as I would like. Also, because I have no lab, I can't actually equip either of these ninjas with that ninja equipment that I forged last turn. So, oops, that was an oversight. We'll get that fixed. Uh, once again, I'm recruiting regular Shugenjas to save money. I've, I'm have i not recruiting a Master Shugenja here this turn. Once I get the lab here, I'm upgrading that fortress. Next turn, I'll start building either the lab or the temple, and the turn after, I'll build the other one. Uh, next turn, I will also have my first Ryujin. Yay! That will be so much fun. And we'll see what happens there. I have been told that Man is attacking Ulm, which from my perspective is fine. By all means, kill Ulm, let Ulm die, and go away. Um, there's been some kind of technical difficulties, I think, that have really hurt Atlantis. So Atlantis has staled at least once. And, um... That's also fine by me, because it means they're not expanding very rapidly, which is kind of what I want. Um, if Atlantis takes their whole ocean here, and here, and here, and here, that's okay. I won't complain about it. I will eventually have to fight them, but we will see how that goes at some later date. For now, we're just recruiting very little, honestly, because all of our money is going towards infrastructure. And working, of course, on research. We'll hit Alteration level 3 next turn. Should hit level 4 just a couple turns after that. Which will give us a lot of cool things. Wind Guide, Temper Flesh, Destruction, etc. Swarm. Swarm is a big one. And after that, it'll take a few turns to hit level 5. Because level 5, if I recall correctly, level 3 is 400 research points. Level 4 is 700. Level 5 is 1300. So at 124 research points per month, it'll take us a little while. In fact, to hit level 4 will probably take us like 3 or 4 turns. And then level 5 will be another 4 or 5 turns after that. But in any case, uh, we're doing all right so far. Patala has besieged Raga. It's an interesting battle mainly because of what it doesn't have. So Patala has hired literally every mercenary in the game. They've got Hannibal's War Elephants to bolster their own War Elephants. They've got a line of their Sacreds, the Naga Warriors, with this Hypnotize attack. And they've got a line of Light Bandar Archers providing arrow support. On the other side, this is just Raga's province defense. They don't have any actual units here. And so, we get to see Elephants function in the ideal circumstance for Elephants, that is, massed and faced with only trampleable infantry and they go to town 25 war elephants stomp out over a hundred enemy infantry in a very short period of time even then the damage inflicted by the arrows and javelins causes three of them to trample back through their own lines and they do inflict some damage uh, very minor damage overall but still damage they they hurt a couple of these nagas to one degree or another but I mean, this kind of speaks for itself. The the war elephants, this is exactly where war elephants want to be, exactly what they want to be doing, and they just ran right over the enemy without a qualm or a pause. While the, uh, the Pygons and the Turin infantry just sort of did what they could, which wasn't much. I don't know where the Zayedans are. Where are they? Like... 
why would they not be here? I mean, 10 or 12 Zayedans could have turned that around, in my opinion. But in any case, Raga is now under siege. He still has quite a few provinces, but with his only fort under siege, assuming he doesn't have another fort, which he might, um, with his capital under siege, he's going to find it hard to drive income. And, of course, he can't recruit any of his capital-only units while his capital is under siege. So this might be the death knell for Raga, which would be a little bit worrisome. I would find it a little bit worrisome, personally. But we'll see what develops. Um, I'm busy with Miklan. Raga and uh, Patala are doing their own thing. Ohm is now apparently fighting man. Bogarus up here is doing something or other with their lives. Hopefully not uh, researching blood magic. That would be very worrisome. And I'm actually doing fine. I'm doing okay. Uh, it's turn 17. I have 1, 2... 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 provinces, which is better than I had been afraid I would do. And we'll see what develops next turn. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in turn 18.